the boy who lived by louise charlton chapter two the sole survivor the strangely familiar sight of grimwald place's dingy basement kitchen was harry stop as he stepped out of the fireplace on to the cold stone floor he remembered the final days that they had spent here during their recent horcrux hunt shivering again at the memories not just of their horcrux horrors but also the horrors of the recent war the grimy dingy room had an air of having been searched but creature had been busy tidying everything up again waiting for his master to come home whether yaxley had found anything of significance it was impossible to tell this somehow gave harry a feeling of immense relief harry lingered only a moment in the freezing cold kitchen before progressing through the rest of the house the musty air around him froze his warm breath forming clouds of steam in front of him although it seemed like a lifetime ago harry could still remember the cold locket that once pressed against his chest a sense of hopelessness stealing over him again as he worked his way through the house the memories came flooding back his father dropping to the floor like a stringless marionette his mother pleading for the life of her son cedric diggory murdered thoughtlessly sirius falling through the veil dumbledore suspended broken in mid-air hedwig's life ending with a careless flash of green light dobby looking helplessly down at the knife in his chest and the bodies of fred lupin tonks and colin creevy lying in the great hall there were many others who had died over the years by voldemort's hand some simply used as a means to an end wizard and muggle alike so many families shattered by one man he'd done it harry had finally ended voldemort's reign of terror but at what cost how many had died in the process grief burdened his heart like a dead weight in his chest haunting him harry had now tiptoed up the stairs and passed a curtained wall burger black into the drawing-room where harry found himself admiring her handiwork on the black family tree tapestry as he looked at the numerous burn marks where various family members had been disowned over the years harry felt a stinging sensation form behind his eyes whilst he wanted to now more than ever before harry knew he wasn't going to cry the dursleys had beaten that out of him a long time ago he knew he was venturing into dangerous territory but not knowing how he could possibly feel any worse harry scanned the names attached to the burn marks most of the names were regarded simply with mild curiosity harry wondering what they'd done to be disowned isla phineas marius sedrella and alphard until he had two names in particular andromeda and sirius with a pang harry thought of his godfather how he had been at odds with his pro pure blood slytherin family and at the age of only sixteen had run away from this very house gaining his freedom and disowned as a result only to be cooped up in it once more for a whole year being reminded every day of the loneliness he had felt as a boy and then how he harry had been stupid enough to lure sirius away from his miserable but safe house and to his death ultimately leaving the house that he had so despised to his godson alphard of course i remember now harry remarked to himself as he remembered a conversation long ago between him and sirius in this very room sirius's uncle alphard had been posthumously disowned for leaving money to sirius in his will and then the stinging feeling in his eyes intensifying harry thought of andromeda disowned after her marriage to muggle-born ted tonks she had now lost both her husband and her only child left to look after an orphan teddy lupin harry's godson godson to the world's worst godfather harry thought gloomily master creature called out startling harry who was deep in thought creature is glad to see you master harry he added harry didn't intend to be rude but not able to face conversation harry stood up and made his way upstairs to sirius's room here he climbed into sirius's old four-poster bed and closed his eyes as soon as his head hit the pillow although asleep harry was restless his dreams were once again riddled with images of voldemort death eaters snakes and bodies yet his scar didn't even prickle by the time the hogwarts express reached london it was very late the last trains had long departed the muggle platforms causing some confusion among the night staff at the arrival of some very interestingly dressed people but the new arrivals didn't stay long enough for any one to approach them they sporadically disappeared each with a loud crack the weasleys were no exception once through the barrier from platform nine and three quarters bill and fleur had apparated back to shell cottage and the remaining group had paired up to apparate to the village square of ottery st catchpole george taking ron and hermione taking ginny by side along apparition as soon as they stepped over the threshold of the burrow ron who had been complaining of being starving repeatedly during their walk from the village repeated this notion once more so mrs weasley led the group into the kitchen and began preparing sandwiches summoning bread cheese bacon and eggs silently commanding the kitchen utensils with ease well i never thought i'd be on the hogwarts express again arthur mrs weasley chimed over her shoulder whilst watching the pack of bacon drop into the frying pan yes it brought back fond memories mr weasley replied his eyes glazing over in reminiscence it's so weird after all this time the train hasn't changed a bit interjected charlie it was at this moment after everyone had sat down at the table that hermione realised that two bodies were missing george and ginny must have slipped upstairs when no one was looking hermione thought and concluded that she would give them some space in all the exuberance of nostalgia hermione was able to wrap up two packages of sandwiches and napkins and slip them into her beaded bag unnoticed she then silently crept out of the kitchen and upstairs to george's room she tentatively knocked on the door before softly calling out george i brought you some sandwiches i'll just leave them here outside the door and go if you want to talk you know where i am she thought it best not to intrude 
she then went down to jinny's room and did the same for her before returning downstairs where have you been ron asked her in a whisper as she took a seat next to him at the table i went to the bathroom she hissed back giving him an i dare you to challenge me look ron faltered opening and closing his mouth several times thinking of a suitable response but hermione cut him off retorting i suppose i have to announce every time i need to use the bathroom now do i causing ron to silently seethe until mrs weasley sent every one off to bed hermione knocked softly on jinny's bedroom door before opening it in the darkness it was hard to find jinny but once her eyes had adjusted she found a large lump under the duvet she wasn't sure what she had expected to see but this wasn't it jinny so brave and resilient had completely resigned herself creeping gradually towards the lump which was steadily rising and falling with gentle breaths hermione slowly pulled the covers back and asked jinny are you okay her face was pensive and tragically calm tears had slid elegantly down her face but she had not resigned to sobs her voice surprisingly steady jinny began what's he done to me hermione her voice wavered a little before she finished i think i can give cho chang a run for her money she then gave hermione a weak smile and allowed another single tear to leave her eye hermione was lost for words resorting to putting an arm around jinny comforting her after a few seconds of silence jinny gave hermione a half smile and began thanks for the sandwiches by the way you have a kind heart you always have and that's what i've always loved about you her voice was beginning to break and a new bout of tears had begun jinny casually shrugged but hermione fell to stinging at the back of her throat blocking the words that had formed in her mind from being spoken giving a little cough to loosen her throat hermione managed well i didn't want you to starve trying to keep her shaky voice casual she felt like crying too because of jinny's kindness in the midst of her grief but knowing that she had to keep strong for jinny's sake hermione fought back the tears threatening to overcome her the girls then heard the loud sound of large feet shuffling up the stairs and without knocking ron flung jinny's bedroom door open and began hermione can i pick your brains a moment looking up ron saw hermione's exasperated expression and jinny's piercing glare that usually meant serious hexing a little hot around the collar ron continued swallowing hard to regain moisture to his throat er uh, miney i've never sent a howler before and i asked mum for some pointers seeing as she's so good at them but i got a right earful as ron flushed an even deeper shade of crimson jinny had to clench her fists to stop herself from bursting out laughing and even hermione had to stifle a giggle as ron muttered under his breath about rude and tactless she thinks i should leave harry alone ron continued more confidently but because you're so good at everything i was wondering if you could help me instead he asked nervously rubbing the back of his head with his hand well i'm not sure it's wise either but for the sake of filling the gap in your knowledge i'll lend you a book with the instructions unfortunately i don't have one that will teach you how to knock before entering a room hermione sternly retorted oh ron began his face relaxing as comprehension slowly dawned on him oh right well i i'll be up in my room then he finished then turned on his heel pulled the door open and trotted out happy to be rid of his sister's sharp burning stare he's so rude i can't believe that man sometimes hermione apologized seething don't worry hermione i'm used to it after nearly seventeen years here i've learnt that you don't really get any privacy at the burrow jinny remarked rather amused before lying back down in her bed and pulling the covers over her in silence that night she tossed and turned wishing more than anything that the lifeless duvet wrapped tightly around her was harry then hating herself for it harry where are you jinny silently called out somehow hoping harry would hear her of course there was simply silence in response and jinny eventually drifted off to sleep her head resting on a damp pillow